Beidou is a tanky Claymore user with a unique full counter mechanic. Her reactive playstyle can be suited for both a carry and a support role on your team. I prefer to play her as a support and swap her in to counter enemy attacks similar to using a royal release. This is how you wish to die. <laughs> You can also compare this to any other game with a parry and counter mechanic. In this video, I'll discuss how to play and gear her in both a support and carry row, as well as team comps for each. As a carry and a support, you never want to use Beidou's charge attack. It doesn't do much damage, drains a lot of stamina, and the forward moving trajectory makes it awkward to keep hitting enemies. As a support, you will be mostly using her elemental skill and burst. If you are using the prototype animus, you can try to add 1 to 2 normal attacks and try to proc its passive. Otherwise, don't even bother with normal attacks. As a carry though, you will be using normal attacks a lot. Her 2 hit, 4 hit, and 5 hit combos are the ones you want to use. They all do similar damage as seen in this comparison as long as you animation cancel the last attack with a dash, a jump, or even her abilities. Use the combo that fits the situation. If you are low on stamina, don't do the 2 hitter. If there are lots of enemies around prepping to hit you, do the shorter combo and cancel with her elemental skill. Be flexible and adapt accordingly. In my opinion, her elemental skill, Tide Caller, is the best part of her kit. No other character has an ability that gets stronger when you are hit and counters back with bigger damage. This skill has 3 levels of damage, depending on how many times Beidou is hit while holding the skill. You can see the difference in damage, with the max level charge doing over 3 times the damage of a level 1 charge. This difference will continue to increase as you level up the talent. At talent level 6, the max charge will do 4 times the damage, and at talent level 8, the max charge will almost do 5 times the damage. Also, her first ascension passive puts the counter to max level if you activate the skill the same time you are getting hit. You can see that I got the max damage even though I was hit only once during my counter. This damage can also crit and is affected by bonus electro damage. When she uses this counter, Beidou creates a small shield that scales with her max HP. She can still take damage while charging the skill so she's not invincible, but she does take a lot less damage from electro attack. If she's your carry on the field, then you can cancel any normal attack into her E to counter the incoming big hits. If she's a support, you can swap her in and then immediately counter. Do note that there is about a half second delay before you can counter after swapping, depending on your latency. Her elemental burst, Stormbreaker, is much more simpler than the counter. It puts a buff around your character that shoots out lightning discharge when you attack. The Discharge actually travels pretty far, around the max distance of your archers and casters. Her Constellation 1 and 2 makes her burst even better by providing a shield and causing extra bounces on the Discharge. The shield from her Constellation 1 is also nice if your main carry is using the Bolide set. Pairing Beidou with a Hydro unit is pretty fun since you can see lots of Lightning Discharge from her ult as it bounces along with Electro Charge reactions. Now on to weapons. The best free-to-play weapon for both the carry and support build is the Prototype Animus. The best 3-star weapon for each role is the Debate Club and the Blood Tainted Greatsword, respectively. Debate Club provides attack as a secondary stat and increases the damage on her normal attacks after using her counter, while the Blood Tainted Greatsword increases damage to enemies affected by Pyro and Electro, and boosts her Elemental Mastery, which is quite nice for her support playstyle. If you include the gacha and battle pass options, then there's more variety. Obviously, the 5 star Wolf's Greystone is the best weapon for any Claymore carry. The Skyward Pride is a little better than the Prototype Animus with no refinement. Prototype Animus actually catches up in power around refinement 4. Beidou can still use energy recharge as a carry and the raw attack power of a 5 star weapon is too much to ignore. Ranking the 4 star weapons, I put the craftable animus in the top spot. The serpent spine from the battle pass has my favorite secondary stat, but the passive doesn't synergize with Beidou as much. You lose stacks of the buff when you get hit while countering. This makes the weapon feel a little awkward to use, so I'm putting it below the animus. 
The other 4 star weapons are average for her carry playstyle. There's more choices for a support Beto. The best weapon will be the 5 star Skyward Pride, but the Wolf's Grey Zone is still nice since the attack scales on both her counter and ultimate. If you are using her support solely for her burst and not the counter, then don't use the Wolf's Grey Stone and focus on Elemental Mastery and Energy Recharge. The best 4 star support weapon will be the Rain Slasher. Its stats and passive synergizes well with Beto's abilities. Both the Sacrificial and Favonius Greatsword provides a good amount of energy recharge, but their passives won't be utilized too much. The counter ability already has a low cooldown, and if you use it correctly, enemies won't be attacking you that quick for another counter. If you happen to have extra crit rate from artifacts, then Favonius is a little better than Sacrificial. The prototype Animus is still a good support weapon for her counter. When you switch Beto in, try to land two quick normal attacks to proc the passive. The passive does a really nice chunk of damage if it happens to activate. Her artifacts also depend on the build. For carry, you want to use the 4-piece Gladiator set. The stat priority will be Electro damage on the Chalice or Goblet, Crit Rate on the Helmet, and Attack Percent on the Timepiece. If you can't get decent stats on a full Gladiator set, then you can temporarily use the 2-piece Berserker and a 2-piece bonus from any of the plus 18% attack sets. I don't recommend keeping these for the late game since Berserker and the other 18% attack sets are only 4-star artifacts. If you have Constellation 1, you can also use 4-piece of Retracing Bolide to amp her normal attacks. This set also makes the shield from your counter stronger. For her support build, you should go with both the Scholar and Exile set for the extra energy recharge. Her burst costs 80 energy and it can take a while to build up. A more damaging option is 4 pieces of Noblesse or Instructor. To get the Instructor 4 piece bonus to activate, Beidou needs to be on the field when the elemental reaction occurs. This is pretty natural when you use her counter, but if you are using her ultimate, make sure to do a couple normal attacks to create an elemental reaction. In this clip, you can see my Fischl has 90 Elemental Mastery. If I switch to Fischl immediately after using Beidou's ult and have Fischl create the Elemental Reaction, she doesn't get the 120 bonus Elemental Mastery. You have to have Beidou on the field when the reaction occurs to get this bonus. You can also just be near enemies when you activate her burst since the activation also causes Electro damage. Stat priority is Electro bonus damage on the Goblet, Energy Recharge on the Timepiece, and Elemental Mastery on the Helmet. Elemental Mastery can be rolled on the Timepiece as well, so use that if you can't find one with Energy Recharge. We can quickly go over her Talents and Constellations since most of the details was mentioned earlier. As a carry, your leveling priority is Oceanborn, Tidecaller, then Stormbreaker. Support is the other way around, so level Stormbreaker, Tidecaller, then Oceanborn. Her first Ascension passive is really nice. A perfectly timed counter instantly brings it to maximum charge for max damage. Her second passive helps her carry playstyle by increasing her attack speed after performing a max charge counter. Make sure to use the counter often, it does an insane amount of damage in a short time. Final menu page is her Constellation. Constellation 1 creates a shield when she uses her burst, which is great for a support build. This also activates the 4 piece bonus from the Retracing Bolide set. Her C2 also buffs her ult, creating extra lightning discharge bounces on enemies. C4 increases overall damage from her normal attacks and helps create additional elemental reactions. Finally, her C6 makes Electro units do more damage after Beidou ult. The only special constellation in my eyes is her first one, which allows the use of the Bolide set without requiring a Geo unit. Although you still probably want one to keep a shield on your carry at all times. Speaking of backup units, it's time for her team comps. The teammates will depend on whether you are playing Beto as a carry or support. As a carry or sub carry, you need a healer or crowd control support. Healers can be any of the units you see here. As you can tell, Bennett is my favorite unit to fill the slot. There are two options for crowd control. Usually, Venti's ult pulls enemy too high for most characters to hit, but Beto has a lot of verticality in her attacks, 
which allows her to still hit most units floating in Venti Zone. A Cryo unit will help cause the Superconduct reaction, which is great to have, since it allows Beto to dish out more damage with her normal attacks. All the Cryo unit works, but I would put Kaya as a last option since his burst uptime is pretty low. For the last unit, you will want to look into Elemental Resonance. Two Electro units will really help getting her ult back faster, while two Power units provide extra attack. You can also have a Geo unit to generate shields if you are using the Retracing Bolide set. If you happen to have a C6 Beto, then Double Electro is a better option to make use of that resistance debuff. For the support slot, just choose a unit that can contribute to the team without physically being on the field. Since Beto has a good mix of damage types, you don't require a specific character on the team. You can also run her with Child and have both be a carry and sub-carry role. Beto's burst pairs really well with a Hydro unit to damage groups of enemies. A support Beto can fit into many teams that want to utilize a reaction with Electro. The most important factor is whether you enjoy her support playstyle of swapping in to counter enemy units. This reaction gameplay is half her kit. Some carries that can benefit from her support are any of the 5 star powerhouse units, Ningguang, Shangling, or a carry Fischl. I don't recommend pairing with a Razor since you don't want to swap him out while his ultimate is active, so you lose the benefits of having an on-demand counter for about half the time Razor is on the field. For the other team slots, you want another support that can maintain damage without being on the field. And the final slot should be a healer or crowd control unit. Her team comps as a support can be similar to her sub-carry team comps. The main difference is how she functions. The carry or sub-carry is more focused on doing normal attacks and staying on the field longer, while the support is focused on quick counters and swapping out after using her burst. And that's about sums it up for my guide on Beidou. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe if you feel up to it while I leave you with a final clip of Hilly Churros being constantly electrocharged by Beidou's ultimate.